Okay, so in this video, I'm going to uh, check to see if uh, some of our variables here in our data set are normally distributed, and then we're also going to take a look at see and see how these uh, two variables that I choose, uh, if there's any kind of relation between them, and we're also going to kind of check for, for outliers. So here's our data set. Um, it's just a set of variables uh, from A through L, and they're all numeric. Uh, so I'm going to choose two of these uh, variables. I'm going to do D and K. And we're going to see if they are normally distributed. So to do this, we go to Describe. And we're going to do Distribution Analysis. OK, so we're going to choose D and K. And we're not really limited to how many variables we can have in the analysis variables for this. <clears throat> so then on the left-hand side over here, we go to Distributions. And we're interested in the normal distribution, so we're going to check to see if these are normally distributed. Then we go to plots, and for better visual inspection, we're going to do histogram and probability plot. And we click run. <clears throat> okay, so first up, see up, up here it says uh, the variable D that we're looking at. <clears throat> so the yellow uh, yellow curve here is the normal distribution curve, and as you can see, our actual data does not really fit this at all. So to better confirm this, we can look at our goodness of fit tests for normal distribution. So over here, the p-values, we look on the far right-hand side, and these values are all <clears throat> uh, less than 0.05, means that we reject the null hypothesis that our data is normally distributed, which by looking at it again, visual inspection, we can kind of agree with that. Uh, also, we have our probability plot for D, and the goal here is to get our blue points as close to this yellow line as possible, and Clearly, we don't have that here. So once again, for we we uh, we kind of assume that our data not assume, but we kind of come to the conclusion that our data is not normally distributed. So for our variable k, we can look at our histogram and completely different picture. It almost fits right under the normal distribution curve, and it's on visual inspection from the histogram. It looks like it's a pretty good fit. So let's look at our goodness of fit for normal distribution values. Look at the p values over here. And these are greater than 0.05, so there's enough there's enough evidence to suggest at this point that our data is normally distributed. So let's look at our probability plot, and yeah, completely different picture here. We have all of our blue points that are pretty much on the the yellow line here, and that's good if we're testing for normal distribution. This is what, this is what we want to see, or any distribution rather. We'll have this line, and we just want our points to get as close to that line as possible. <clears throat> so. But this may not actually be correct. There may be things in our data that we just haven't seen yet that can either make the data seem like it's normally distributed or make it seem like it's not normally distributed, mainly outliers. A lot of times with outliers, it may skew the data in such a way that it'll mask our actual distribution. <clears throat> so let's kind of take a look at to see how these, vari these two variables, D and K, there's any kind of relation between them. So for this pretty simple. We're going to take a look at our line plot. So we've got a graph line plot. And then we do the scatter plot with regression line. So we click this. Then we go to data. So our horizontal for this will let be K. And then the vertical will be D. <clears throat> So over here under Appearance, we go to Interpolations, and we want to make sure we have Regression selected for Interpolation method. And then the type, we'll do Quadratic. Really, is a good, it's good to check all three of these types of regression, Linear, Quadratic, and Cubic. But for now, we're going to do Quadratic. And we want to force Regression line through the origin. And we also want to show the confidence intervals. This will make it easier to see uh, any kind of potential outliers. And so we click Run. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's really much of a correlation, meaning that we don't see a pattern as if when k gets larger or smaller, uh, d does not really follow suit. So we have a positive correlation if as k got larger, d would get larger. If k got smaller, d would get smaller. Uh, we don't really have that here. It just seems all sporadically kind of uh, placed about. And these are our confidence li limits here, the upper, level, or upper limit at the top, and then our lower limit down here, these kind of dotted lines. And the majority of our data falls in this region. 
But interesting, you can see that we have some outliers way up here. And <clears throat> in practice, when you come across outliers like this, you would have to go through your data and make sure that these are either correct values or maybe they're mistakes because this may really change your analysis quite a 